Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Fight Song Sports Podcast. As always, my name is Ty Hansen. Joining me today, Bryson Lewis. And Bryson, we have reached the best time of the year for college sports. Uh, it's officially March. Uh, March Madness begins tomorrow. Not only the first day, also St. Patrick's Day. Um, could be some partying going on for, <laughs> for sure. Um, but man, I think we got a great um, field of 68 this year. Uh, already got the play-in game started. Um, you know, and as I said, first round starts tomorrow. Um, I, I don't want to waste any time. But we got a lot to talk about. We'll dive right into it. We're going to go game by game, give both of our brackets. We're going to start in the West region um, and start with the round of 64. First matchup, Gonzaga, Georgia State. What do you got there? I'm assuming the Zags. Yeah, Gonzaga. Absolutely. Yeah, also, have, also have Gonzaga. I think you can pretty much just pencil them in. Um, we'll move to the 8-9, Boise State, Memphis. Memphis. Yeah, I got I got Memphis as well. I think that's a solid team. Um, but also, I think that's a game that could go both ways. Um, obviously, the 8-9 games pretty much always go both ways. Um, you know, equal equal teams in the 8-9 game. There's not really one that is um, much better than the other. Um, and we'll, we'll just continue down. UConn, New Mexico State. I got UConn winning that game. Um, and we get into our first 5-12 there. Yeah, absolutely. I have UConn winning as well. Um, I think we'll talk about the five twelve matchups um, a little bit later, but yeah. probably not too good of a year for the twelves this year. I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I definitely think it's an interesting year, and and I think New Mexico State. You know, we just haven't seen a lot from them. They haven't played a ton of top teams, um, but I think that UConn team is really good, and and they should advance. Um, but then they play the winner of Arkansas and Vermont. And this is a game that a lot of people have been talking about and one that I did a lot of research on as well. Um, that Vermont team is good. And, and as a 13 seed, um, you know, they, they get a tough matchup because you get matched up with that four seed. And that Arkansas team is really good as well. Um, but Vermont, they play really sound basketball. Who do you have advancing? I've got Vermont, but I've been going back and forth on this game all day. Um, Arkansas is obviously a very good team. They close the season really, really strong after a slow start, but uh, we're facing a Vermont team that just doesn't turn the ball over really at all. And they're led by a couple seniors and they haven't lost in a long time. And it's just, it's tough, tough matchup for Arkansas. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's definitely one that, especially when the bracket was released, I kind of had my eye on. Uh, and initially when I, when I first went through and just kind of did a, you know, no research, my just initial thoughts, um, I had Vermont beating Arkansas, but I went back and I did some research and I had talked to you about this. I had some interesting stats on Vermont that I wanted to talk about. So Vermont this year, they are, they're a very good offensive team. As you mentioned, don't turn the ball over and they can really shoot the three. That's their, that's how they play. Um, they average 74.9 points per game. So, you know, pretty much 75 points per game. I went through and added up their totals from a home and away or in a way, a way in neutral combined. Um, and because, you know, one thing I think that is important, for, especially in March Madness is how good are you on the road and how good are you at neutral sites? Because you're pretty much always on the road. Vermont at home is an 80.8 point per game team. They're scoring 80 points at home, almost 81 on the road and at neutral sites, just 69.4. So they're scoring about 10 points less than their average when they're on the road, which 70 points might not beat Arkansas. That's, I mean, Arkansas can, Arkansas can score too. And so I picked their three neutral site games in all three games, their three point percentage was lower than their season average. They shot 27, 21 and 25% from three in those three games in the neutral sites. And they've got five losses this year. And I did some extensive research, and I might be going out on a limb because this is March. So Vermont's home arena, there are no stands behind the backboard, behind the hoop. It's just the wall, you know, and the hoops you pretty much attached to the wall. In all five of their losses, the arena that they played in had stands behind the hoop. This is a three-point shooting team, and people always talk about how depth perception messes with you when you're, taught, when you're shooting from three. And so I think that maybe because they're at home and you're always practicing with a wall behind the hoop, you don't have anything, you know, you don't have anything that's in the distance behind it. You've just got the wall there. So I might be reaching out and you might call me crazy, but that's the reason I've got an Arkansas advancing. Um, and you, you can just see how, how deep I had to go to find a good reason to pick that game. Um, that was what I spent a lot of time on, but 
you know, I might be reaching, but I've got Arkansas advancing. So yeah. we'll move on to the to the six eleven. What do you think? I mean, do you think I went? You think I went crazy I, I on mean, that one? Obviously, it's March, and everybody loves to do deep dives and stuff. I've personally, full disclosure, been off the grid for like three or four days, basically. So I haven't done a ton of research myself, but I've put it together a bracket. I'm going to do a deeper dive later tonight. But this Arkansas team is a team that gets to the line a ton. One of the best teams in the country. And like I said just a minute ago, this is a team game that I've gone back and forth on all day. Yeah. And I've swapped my picks two or three times. It's, I don't know, it's difficult. It's a really difficult matchup, and it could really go either way. I think it's going to be a tight, tight game. I agree. Uh, we'll move down to Alabama, and then the winner of Rutgers Notre Dame, which is actually going on right now. Um, obviously, that not final yet. Uh, who do you got advancing there? Um, I have Alabama, which we'll see who wins the Rutgers Notre Dame yeah. game. I'm not a huge fan of either team. Rutgers has some impressive wins this season, but Notre Dame, I just flat out don't think they should be in the field. They've played nobody all year. They've got one good win, which is Kentucky, but they've played 19 games against quad three and four opponents, which has been a big deal. I think A&M and both Oklahoma should both be in over Notre Dame um, without question. And I've got Alabama because they haven't had the greatest season, 1913, obviously not super strong, but this is a team they've got NCAA tournament experience and they've beaten some really, really good teams this year. They beat Gonzaga, one of Gonzaga's three losses. Yeah. They've beat Houston, who's a very, very strong team. And they've beat Baylor mm -hmm. as well. Um, and I believe they also beat Arkansas once. So it's a team that has faced tremendous competition and has won some good games against really good opponents. Everything you said is the reason I have them advancing as well. Um, you know, don't love Rutgers or Notre Dame. I think they both kind of um, kind of got lucky in getting in. Um, and especially with the play in game, we'll have to see who, who wins that Notre Dame 22 and 10, but you know, not the toughest schedule in the world Rutgers 18 and 13, uh, you know, but in a pretty good big 10 and they had the four seed, the big 10 tournament, um, uh, and still just kind of, you know, fell into the tournament. Really. I don't really love either team there. I've got Alabama ad advancing as well. Um, and I think a team that people kind of been sleeping on a little bit, as you mentioned, they've got some, some pretty good wins, um, but not quite the record there, but we'll see. Um, they play, will play the winner of Texas tech and Montana state. I'm assuming you've got Texas tech moving on. I yeah, do Texas as well. Tech. Um, just don't think that's really going to be a game. Um, and then another interesting one, uh, down in the bottom half of the bracket here, we got Davidson and Michigan state in the seven ten. Who do you have advancing? I like, uh, Davidson a lot, really good three point shooting team. And we saw them lose to Richmond and their conference tournament championship game, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. Michigan State has been hot and cold all season for the most part, and I just don't trust them coming into the March. I also agree. Um, I have Davidson advancing as well. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Davidson as a 10 seed. They got the 10 seed again. Um, obviously, that famous run with Steph Curry. I don't know that they have a Steph Curry-esque player on this team, um, but definitely still a good team nonetheless. Um, but you're also going up against Izzo in, in March, and he's tough to bet against. So I, th that game could go either way. Um, I, just see, I just see Davidson as a 10 seed, and I like it. I think there's that history there. Um, but that'll be definitely a game to watch. They will play the winner of Duke and Cal State Fullerton. Duke advancing, I'm assuming. Yes. Yep, me as well. That Cal State Fullerton team, I just I don't think we'll be able to keep up. So the round of 32, um, I believe we – Gonzaga Memphis both of us here yep um that could be a good game um either one either whether they get Memphis or Boise State I have Gonzaga advancing assuming yeah I also well. have Gonzaga advancing but Memphis is a team they close the season really really hot um they lost a couple big players due to injury early on in the season and they've really found their stride here as of late I think winning 10 of the last uh 10 of the last 11 in the regular season and it's a team that can compete with Gonzaga, I think. I don't think that it's much is going to come of it. I think Gonzaga is probably the best team in the country coming into the tournament. Yeah. But that doesn't always work out. I agree. Um, I, I don't see them getting beat here, though. Um, if it's another one seed, if maybe they're playing a two seed or something, I could see it, but not Gonzaga. Um, so we'll move down. I, I, we've got UConn, and I have Arkansas. Who do you have there? I have Vermont, but Vermont. I've got UConn beating Vermont. And if it was Arkansas, because I've been going back and forth, I think I would take Arkansas there. But with the Vermont matchup, I would take UConn. 
Um, it's a team they've beaten Auburn, just some good wins again. And I think Vermont runs out of luck here. I've got UConn, Arkansas, and I have UConn advancing to play against Zaga in the Sweet 16 there. Um, I think a good team, a lot of talent there. Uh, haven't had the best year, but I think the talent will show in, in March. Um, and then we'll move, we'll continue to move down here. Alabama, Texas Tech, we both have. Yep. I've and got Tech moving got, on here. I do as well. I do have Tech moving on. Uh, that Tech team is really, really good, I think. Um, and, and I, you know, that Alabama team maybe gives them a scare if they get there, get past the first round, but I got tech advancing, uh, and they will play the winner of, I have Davidson and Duke. You have Davidson and Duke as well. Who do you have winning that game? I've got Duke. I, I don't know if it's going to be correct. I just, Davidson, they showed a couple flaws in that Richmond game and their team. I mean, they can get hot at any moment, obviously, but I think Duke is going to come. Obviously, a little disappointment at the end of the uh, ACC tournament. I think they're going to come out hot early in this tournament. Yeah, I I have Davidson advancing here. Um, I did not like the way Duke ended against um, North Carolina and then into the ACC tournament. Um, I think they needed to win the ACC tournament and didn't. Um, but with that being said, Davidson has shown some, you know, hot and cold. Uh, but they've got to win against Alabama, you know, and Alabama beat Gonzaga, you know, not to go too far down the line there. Um, but if they get hot, I think it's, a, I think it's a team that can get beat uh, or a, that can beat Duke, excuse me. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I think it's just kind of one. I felt like, you know, you just can't go, you can't go chalk all the way. So I, I needed a 10 and I think, it, I think Davidson, if, if his, if they're hot can, can advance. So sweet 16 out of this region. Um, I have Gonzaga, UConn. And you do as well. And then I've got the Zags moving on. I do as well. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe they could get beat there. I just don't see it. The UConn team's good, but I don't think, I don't think they're good enough to keep up with Gonzaga. Um, and then in the other matchup, Gonzaga, who we both have advancing, will play the winner of Tech and Davidson. I have, I have Tech advancing to play Gonzaga in the Elite Eight. Yeah, I've got Tech going up against Duke, but I've got Tech beating Duke as well. So we'll match up with that Gonzaga and Tech game. But this was a tough game for me to pick. Um, Duke has struggled all year with teams who have played slow games. And obviously Tech is a very defensive team. is going to be very comfortable in that aspect. But Tech also, I was hesitant in picking them over Alabama. This is a team that can throw out a clunker on any given night on offense. And while I don't think that's going to happen in the NCAA tournament, um, we've seen it happen a few times. We've seen it happen against Oklahoma yeah. twice, um, even though they won one of those matchups. But I do have Tech advancing to the Elite Eight. And then Gonzaga Tech regional final. Who you got going to the Final Four? I've got the Zags moving on. I also have Gonzaga. Um, that team's too – that they're just – they're too good. And, and as you mentioned, Texas Tech has put up a couple, um, you know, dud performances on offense throughout the season. And that just absolutely cannot happen against Gonzaga. Uh, if you're going to beat that team, you got to outscore them. Um, I don't think you can out out defense them <laughs> and win. But I've got Gonzaga in my final four. Uh, we'll move down to the East, which they will play the winner of, uh, obviously in the final four. Baylor, Norfolk State. Who you got? I've got Baylor. I got Baylor advancing too. That Norfolk State team, I think, um, if we were to have a 16 over one, maybe could be there. Um, I believe got blown out by a good opponent earlier this year. Uh, yeah, Xavier, they lost by 40. Um, good team, but, you know, 16-1, you just can't, can't predict it. And then we'll, they will play the winner of North Carolina Marquette, the 8-9 game. Who you got? I've got UNC moving on. I also have UNC. Um, I love the way they finished the season against Duke. Um, just hammered them. And in a game Duke was supposed to win, Coach K's last home game at Duke, you know. And they walked in there and it was like, it didn't even matter. And they just shoved it to them. I love that. And I love that attitude, especially being a lower seed. This isn't a, this isn't a one or two seed North Carolina, like we've seen in the past. This is an eight seed North Carolina, but this is North Carolina. And they hammered Duke in that game. I love this North Carolina team. I think they advance. Um, moving down St. Mary's, Indiana, another five twelve. Indiana had to play their way into this game. Uh, who you got? This was a tough one for me because I like the St. Mary's team a lot. Yeah. And I think if they get by Indiana, they can get to the Sweet 16 or even the Elite Eight. I think they're very good defensively. We've obviously seen them beat Gonzaga recently. Uh, but I've got Indiana moving on. They've beat a good Illinois team in the uh, Big Ten tournament. And 
I think they're kind of coming to life here. I have Indiana moving on because St. Mary's also is just, they're super slow paced. If they get behind in this game, it's going to be very difficult for them to come back. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is a St. Mary's team. I, I loved, um, they can't score a lot of points, but they can control the game and they just, they'll, they'll play you how they want, how they want to play. And they just control the game and they're not going to let you play fast. You're going to play slow. And that's, that's how you got to beat them. Um, you know, but with that being said, and, and a little spoiler for the rest of my bracket, I looked and I had all fives over 12s. And I was like, that, that can't happen. Just, you know, math, mathematically talking March Madness, it can't happen. And I had to go back and say, who's the most vulnerable. And I think the St. Mary's team out of all the five seeds is the most vulnerable to get beat, especially against Indiana, who's coming out of the big 10, who has played tough teams all year. Uh, I get Indiana moving on. And then they will play the winner of UCLA in Akron. Uh, I have UCLA. I love that UCLA team. I got them moving on. I believe you as well. Yep. Just don't think that Akron team is going to be able to keep up. Um, I think a 13 seed was a tough, a tough draw for them. Um, but continuing down, I think one of the better games of the first round, we have Texas, Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech, the ACC winners. Um, who you got? I've got Virginia Tech here. I, they're hot at the right time. And Texas – they're really good defensively and a Chris Beard coach team, but offensively it's kind of like Texas tech, uh, Chris Beard's old team, ironically. And you just never know what you're going to get out of that offense. And a team like Virginia tech is coming off a phenomenal ACC tournament performance in which they probably had to win the conference to get in. And they yeah. did just that. And I think they're hot at the right time. I agree. I love Virginia tech. Um, I got to move it on. Um, but it's just another game that I think can go either way. Um, but Virginia Tech's hot, and that's why I picked them. Uh, you know, I looked at them, and, and I think kind of pretty equivalent teams, honestly. Um, you know, records are similar, uh, but Virginia Tech's hot, and I think that's what wins you games in March. So they will move on. They've got the winner of the 314 in this region, which is Purdue and Yale. I'm assuming you got the Boilermakers beating Yale. Yes. I do as well. Um, Ivy League champs. You don't play great competition in the Ivy League. I think Purdue steamrolls them. Um, that was not a joke. Kind of ended up being one. But <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move down here. We got Murray State, San Francisco. Murray State to seven. San Francisco to ten. These were both teams that were great all year. Um, and another first-round game that I think is going to be great. Uh, who do you have going on into the round of 32? I have Murray State moving on. I think they're an electric team. Um and I believe San Francisco just had one of their better players announce that he would be missing the first weekend or if not the whole tournament. So I'm going to go with Murray state there. I think, I think before the injury, I was still picking them. Um, yeah. I just, I love that team. And obviously last time you saw them, John Morant, a uh, very explosive yeah. team. They got to the second round and went out, but I like them a lot. I also have the racers moving on um, and then they play the winner of Kentucky and St. Peter's. I have Kentucky moving on. Um, I saw that they would be playing or had the chance to be playing each other in the round of 32. And I wanted that in-state battle, Murray state and Kentucky might've forced it a little bit and just kind of blindly pick Murray state. But I think that they're a great team and, and will advance. I've got Murray state and Kentucky. I'm sure you have the same. Yeah, I do as well. Um, that St. Peter's team is really good. They can play really good defense, but not against Kentucky. So round of 32, Baylor, North Carolina, who we both have at the top. Who do you got advancing Sweet 16? I've got UNC moving on here. I agree with you. I also have UNC moving on. Yeah, this is probably, I think, the first major, major upset uh, we've both yeah. picked. Uh, we talked about it earlier this morning. And this Baylor team obviously ended the season on a loss to Oklahoma in the Big 12 tournament. And you never know what that's going to do to your morale. And it's a team that's missing their best rebounder in JTT and their second leading scorer in LJ Cryer, who just announced today that he will be out for the, at least the first weekend. Um, and when you've got a team like North Carolina, who we saw go in and dominate Duke and they can really rebound the ball, um, especially offensively. It's just a recipe for disaster for Baylor, in my opinion. And I just don't like the matchup. Yep, and I obviously picked North Carolina as well. North Carolina hot, Baylor not. Um, I believe they're – I'll let you quote me if I'm wrong. 
but no team has ever gone on to win the national title after losing their first conference tournament game. I uh, believe I'm not is... sure on that, but I do have another interesting stat, which is that no defending champion has made it past the Sweet 16 since Florida repeated in 2007, yeah. 2008. And there I think go. they might yeah. have even made it past the second round, um, like a quarter of those times. So it's just, it's not a spot that you like to be in if you're Baylor here. Yeah. And I, I believe, I believe that's what it is. No, um, no, no team has gone on to win the national title after losing their first game in the conference tournament. Baylor obviously lost to Oklahoma. Um, so I, I've got them going out there and I think North Carolina is a really tough matchup for them. So we'll, get into the game that they play the winner of, which I believe we both have Indiana UCLA. I've got the Bruins moving on to face North Carolina. Who do you have? I have the Bruins moving on as well here. That UCLA team, I think is really good. Um, I think that they might be able to burn through this region a little bit and kind of be a dark horse um, moving on. And I mean, I'm sure you agree. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, I believe they only have one starter that's under six, six or six, seven. And Anytime you face in size like that in college basketball, it's a really, really tough matchup no matter who you are. Okay, I can confirm no team has ever gone on to win the title after losing their first conference tournament game. I had to look it up. So, yes, so that – which obviously applies to Baylor. Um, so, moving on, Virginia Tech-Purdue, I believe we both have there. Um, I've got the 11th seed. Uh, i got the Hokies moving on. Beating Purdue, who do you got? I have the same thing. Um... I just think Purdue is liable to give up points. They're not very good defensively. They don't force turnovers. And that can really favor a Virginia Tech team that plays at a pretty slow pace, um, especially compared to a Purdue team. And I don't like a lot of the Big Big Ten teams, excuse me, this year. And Purdue is one of those I've got going out early. Yep, I also have Purdue going down, and the defense is the main concern. Uh, I think if Virginia Tech is able to control the tempo of that game and keep Purdue from running it up, um, that they should be able to beat them. Um, another good game. They've got two tough – Virginia Tech, that is, has two tough matchups right off the bat if they're able to win their first one. Um, and then they'll move on to the Sweet 16 between Murray State and Kentucky. I have Kentucky advancing. I have Kentucky advancing as well. Um, in-state battle, obviously, Murray State-Kentucky, that is going to be a very, very good game. I must watch if we get that matchup. Um, I just think that Kentucky's too big and physical down low. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, Kentucky's a team I like a lot. We'll talk about them a little, uh, a little more uh, here after we give all of our picks. Um, but they're a phenomenal basketball team, and they've got one of the highest ceilings in the entire tournament, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. So the Sweet 16 in that region, North Carolina, UCLA, do we have the exact same, yep. I believe? Um, yep. I've got UCLA moving on. I, I do as well. Like I said, we, then, we talked about it. Tough matchup for anyone, really. Yeah. Yeah, and then Virginia Tech, Kentucky, we both have them Sweet 16. Kentucky as well? I also have Kentucky. Yeah, I think uh, I think that Kentucky team is just way too physical. Um, and, and then getting into the UCLA-Kentucky Elite Eight matchup, the regional final, I have Kentucky advancing. I also have Kentucky going into the final four. So in the final four, we both have Gonzaga and Kentucky as well. I like that Kentucky team a lot. I think they're really physical. Um, obviously have a phenomenal coach uh, who's been there and done it. Uh, it's a program that's been there and done it before. Um, and uh, I just, I don't see, I don't see anyone in that region really competing with them. You know, maybe Baylor obviously is the one, um, but you know, even, the, even Purdue, I just don't see, you know, Purdue as a three, um, you know, UCLA is a four. I just don't see any of them keeping up with Kentucky. So we'll jump to the bottom half of the overall bracket, the South region, Arizona and the champions from the play-in game here, Wright State, who just beat Bryant probably 10 minutes ago. Um, Arizona, I'm assuming. Yep, Arizona. I also have Arizona moving on. Um, I thought Bryant was probably going to take down Wright State and give Arizona a scare, but Wright State just played really well against them tonight. Um, I don't know they're good enough to keep up with Arizona, but you never know. Uh, They will play the winner of the 8-9, Seton Hall and TCU. Who do you have advancing? I've got TCU moving on here. I have Seton Hall going. Um, I, I think it came down maybe to the name. Um, if you gave me a blind resume, I, you know, it may go the other way. 
But for me, Seton Hall is a team that has been a program, I should say, that has been to the NCAA tournament many times and had tons of success. TCU not known as a huge basketball and March Madness school. Um, maybe a little bit of bias there came in for me. Uh, TCU, I think, a great team, though, for sure. Um, and obviously the eight, nine games can go either way. Yeah, absolutely. This TCU team, I think, is really good. I think they pick, they picked up a tough seed with the nine seed. Obviously, they'll have to play Arizona yeah. in the second round if they win. Um, but they're a super physical team led by Eddie Lampkin um, in the paint, who's just massive. Yeah. His brother played An football animal. at Oklahoma. Um, they've also beat Kansas. They've beat Texas Tech. So, and obviously in the Big 12, you're battle tested. You've played really good teams night in and night out. And I think that they can move on and maybe give Arizona a scare in the next round. Yep, for sure. I, I, I definitely think so too. It's an eight, nine game. It's tough. We'll jump down to the five twelve Houston UAB. A lot of people have been hot on this UAB team. Um, they're good. They can score. Um, I mean, it, it's going to be tough. Uh, Walker, obviously a phenomenal player for the Blazers. Um, I personally am really, really high on this Houston team. I have Houston advancing. Who do you have? I, this is another game I've gone back and forth on. I think I told you this morning I had UAB. I've switched it to Houston since then. Um, UAB led by Jordan Walker, who's phenomenal. I think he dropped like 40 in their conference championship game. Um, they can force turnovers. Uh, Houston's obviously a little older. They're experienced. Uh, but one thing about each team that kind of scares me, Houston, they primarily – run an eight man rotation and you can tire guys out really quickly, especially against the UAB team. That's going to like to run. And that can lead to a lot of trouble in March on the flip side of things. UAB, I think like 40% of their offensive production comes from Jordan Walker. And yep. when you're facing a defensive team like Houston, who loves to run at you mm -hmm. and uh, press you and steal the ball, that can lead to a lot of trouble if they're able to lock Jordan Walker up. Very, very guard heavy team as well. Uh, a lot of production from their guards. Um, and that's, that's where they're going to play. And I think that, uh, I think that that Houston team is just, just too good. Um, and one that I am really, really high on, um, and moving forward, I, it's a five twelve. It scares me a little bit. I think if you, I think if you move the seeds to, um, you know, four thirteen, I think I, I don't even think about it and just pick, pick Houston. Um, the seed scares me though, but, Moving on uh, into the 413 game, who or I have Houston advancing. Who do you have there? Uh, I have Houston in the 512. I've got oh, Illinois in the 413. Yeah, the, yep. So Houston, who we both have there, advancing it to play the winner of the 413. You have Illinois. Yep. I have Tennessee Chattanooga beating Illinois here. Um, I think this is the best game of the first round. Um, I don't know that either of these teams are – like, how do we want to put this like too complete? I think that you've got one guy on both teams that really just can carry each team and have carried him so far. You have Kofi Coburn versus Malachi Smith. This is going to be a absolute battle. And I think probably the best first round matchup. Um, I think Tennessee Chattanooga can, can pull out um, a victory over here against Illinois. I don't love that Illinois team, but Coburn, download just an animal um i believe averaging a double double this year something like 20 points and 11 boards uh, dude's crazy um i i think it could go either way um so in that in that round of 32 we'll have houston and chattanooga you'll have houston and illinois um we'll move down to the 6 11 um a game that that has been i believe espn reported the most popular upset pick colorado state in michigan um People didn't love the Michigan seed. People thought they were more of a bubble team and, and for sure going to be in a play-in if they were to get in. They don't even have to worry about a play-in game. They get an 11 seed. A lot of people thought they were going to be a 12. Um, who, who, do you, who do you got there in Colorado State, Michigan? I've got Michigan. I'm not super confident in it. Michigan's another team I don't think should have got in ahead of an OU or an A&M. They just don't have those quality wins, um, 17 and 14. But I just think the talent – it's going to be a little too much for Colorado state. Um, we'll just have to see. They haven't played a top 25 team all year. Um, and I mean, th they have beaten the Boise state team and a St. Mary's team. So it's, it's an interesting matchup. Yeah. I've got Michigan advancing as well. Um, I think that, you know, this Michigan team barely got in, but I think that they could kind of ruin some people's brackets um, getting into the three 14. I've got Tennessee advancing. And Michigan, Tennessee, I, 
I've got Tennessee advancing as well, you know, jumping ahead. But I think that Michigan team could beat Tennessee if if they um, if they were both reach. Um, Tennessee's really really good. I don't Longwood. I don't think even gives them a gives them a run. Um, but I don't know, man. I think that Michigan team might be able to might be able to seek out two wins and really kind of kind of blow through people's brackets. A lot of people have picked that Tennessee team. They're hot right now, um, coming off the SEC um, conference tournament. It's a really good team. I'm assuming you've got Tennessee as well. Yes, I do. So down here in the last, the last two uh, first round matchups in this region, Ohio state and Loyola Chicago in the seven ten. 10 um, another, another game that people have been picking the underdog here. I've got Loyola Chicago. Who do you have? I have Loyola Chicago moving on as well. I mean, th- they definitely have made a name for themselves in the past couple tournaments. Um, obviously Porter Moser, not there, obviously at Oklahoma now. Um, but I mean, you got sister Jean behind you, um, the heart and soul of that program. Uh, I, I made the mistake in 2018 of picking my own Miami over Loyola, Chicago. I will never forget that moment when they hit the buzzer beater. Um, that one was very upsetting and I have not enjoyed having Loyola, Chicago in the tournament since. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing it again this year. I'm not doing it again on both sides. Last year I picked Ohio state to beat Oral Roberts after I knew that Oral Roberts was going to beat him. I called it and still took Ohio state. Um, and then in 2018, I didn't take Loyola Chicago and Miami beat them or excuse me. And they beat Miami. Uh, and I, and I had Miami in that game. I'm not making both mistakes this year. I am taking Loyola Chicago over Ohio state. It's probably going to go the other way, but, um, they'll play the winner of the two fifteen, which is Villanova and Delaware Villanova. I'm assuming. Yep, Villanova. Yeah, Jay Wright. Jay Wright runs a juggernaut out there. Um, really good team. Uh, really sound team. Um, I think they'll easily advance. Headed up back to the top of the bracket, round of the 32. Uh, Arizona, and I have Seton Hall. You have TCU. Who do you got? I've got Arizona moving on. I have Arizona. I think Arizona just blows by either team, uh, whoever advance. Um, I don't know if that's really a game. Uh, in the five or in the, uh, what is it? Well, we got five, four matchup. You have Illinois. I've got Houston and Chattanooga. I have Houston. Who do you have? I also have Houston moving on. Um, Illinois, like you said, just not a super complete team. Obviously lost early in the um, Big Ten tournament to Indiana. And I just don't trust them, especially after last year, losing as a one seed in the second round. Yeah. Um, I, I love this Houston team. I'm really high on them. I think a five seed was under seeded for them. This team is really, really good. I've got them advancing on to play Arizona. Um, and the other two round of 32 games, I have Michigan and Tennessee. You, uh, you do as well. Yep. I have Tennessee advancing. I also have Tennessee moving on. And then they'll play the winner of Villanova and Loyola Chicago. I've got Villanova. I do as well. So then sweet 16, I have Arizona and Houston. I believe you do as well. Yep. I've got Houston. I've got Arizona moving on. Um, Arizona is one of my favorite teams in the tournament, along with Kentucky. And we've seen it all from them. They're very good offensively. They're very good defensively. They've beat some really good teams. Um, UCLA, uh, they beat Illinois even, I believe, in the regular season. And they played Tennessee close, uh, which might be a preview of my Elite Eight matchup. Um, But Houston's a scary matchup for anyone in the tournament. Um, Kyler Edwards is a phenomenal, phenomenal player, especially on the offensive side. And they play really well defensively. Um, I think this is where their run ends. Obviously they were final 14 last year, but I think this is where it ends for them this year. Yeah, for sure. And you got into the, uh, the elite eight matchup. Um, you've got Tennessee beating Villanova. I do as well. Um, that Tennessee team's hot or hot right now. And when they ran through the sec tournament and won it, um, I think it kind of turned some heads and, and definitely got my attention. Um, so I've got Houston and Tennessee in the elite eight. Uh, you have Arizona and Tennessee. Who do you have moving on to the final four? I've got Arizona moving on to the final four. I have Houston and I am really, really big on this Houston team. Um, obviously I think they're one of the most complete teams in the tournament outside of free throw shooting. I think that's going to be the one thing which scares me a lot, but I'm going out, going out on a limb. Um, there is a stat. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's top 40 in offense and top 20 in adjusted, adjusted offense and adjusted defense, top 40 in offense, top 20 in defense um, is that has been the national champion every single time. I believe, I believe there hasn't been one that has not qualified for those. 
Houston does qualify for that. So they are in the top 40 in offense and top 20 in defense. Um, and then another stat, the last 10 years, a seed higher than four has made the final four nine out of 10 times. The one being 2012. Um, it, it, it's hard to predict. It's hard to take anybody outside of the top four seeds in any region to go all the way to the final four. Um, but when I look at every team five and below, I think that this is the most complete team. Um, and I'm just going to go with what March Madness has told me for the last 10 years, at least 90% of the time, there will be a seed higher than four. Um, there's mine, man. It's a five in Houston. Yeah, I completely respect that pick. It's like I said, in the very first matchup against UAB, their depth scares me a little bit. Um, but obviously a yeah. very well coached team and, um, very senior heavy and experienced from the final four run last year. Yeah, man, that, that's that's another thing I value a lot uh, in, in, in teams in March is experience and age um, and also how hot you are. And I think that Houston is – they're old. They've got four seniors that I believe that start, um, and they've, they've been there. They were there last year. I mean, they took it all the way to the Final Four, um, and that intrigues me a lot, especially with, you know, just their numbers from this season. So we'll head on to the last region, the Midwest region. Um, I think this one's going to be really, really fun. Um, Kansas, Texas Southern, Texas Southern had to beat Texas Corpus Christi to get in. Um, I don't think Kansas has trouble with either one of those teams. They got Texas Southern. I've got Kansas. I have Kansas as well. They play the winner of San Diego state Creighton, which I think is probably the best eight, nine game. Um, I have Creighton. Who do you have? Uh, I've got San Diego state, but this is a game that I think can go either way. Um, San Diego state. I think a little underperformed during the regular season. They've beaten St. Mary's. They, but they lost three times to Boise state who obviously won that conference. Yep. Um, and Creighton is a team they've beaten Villanova. They've beaten UConn. Um, so they've beaten some really good tournament teams. And I just give the edge of San Diego state just by a touch. I agree. Um, it's eight, nine. I have Creighton advancing. I think Creighton is hot right now. A um, little bit better mojo headed into the tournament. And also for me, that gives me two eight seeds and two nine seeds <laughs> advancing. Um, I kind of got down to the bottom and I was like, well, and I went back and looked and I said, well, we'll make it two and two. That seems pretty much about how the eight nines go. Hopefully I just don't get them backwards. Um, so I'll, we'll, I have Kansas Creighton. You'll have Kansas San Diego State. Uh, the next matchup, Iowa Richmond, another 5-12. Um, I just don't love the 5-12s this year. I think Iowa takes down Richmond fairly handily. I've got Iowa as well. Um, they just shoot the ball too well. Don't de defense doesn't, doesn't wow me, but, um, I think, I don't think Richmond can put up a fight. Um, I think I would advance pretty easily. And then we got another pretty popular upset here. We have Providence, South Dakota state in the four thirteen. Who do you have? I've got South Dakota state moving on. I also had the Jackrabbits from Brookings. Um, I love this team a lot. They are one of the best three point shooting teams of all time, not just in the tournament of all time. Um, shooting 45% right now as a team from three. Um, and that's not, and, and that's not a team that, you know, barely shoots threes and shoots 45%. This team shoots a lot of threes and makes a lot of threes. Um, they are going to run up the scoreboard. And honestly, I want to see an Iowa South Dakota state game in this, in the round of 32, uh, there might be 300 points scored in that game. <laughs> um, but I've got South Dakota State moving on. I just don't think Providence can keep up with them. I mean, if, as long as South Dakota State, I think, doesn't go on a huge drought, that's the thing you worry about this team. Um, we have seen some kind of long scoring droughts from them during the season. As long as they don't have a massive scoring drought, I think they take down Providence, honestly, pretty handily. I just don't think Providence is going to be able to keep up. Yeah, um, Providence is one of those teams who I want to say they're number one in luck on Ken Palm. They and are number one in luck in Ken Palm, yes. That's, and that is another reason I – That's a big red flag for me. Obviously, they had a phenomenal regular season, 25-5. and five. They've beat Tech. They've beat UConn. They've beat Wisconsin. But when you get to the NCAA tournament and you play a high-powered team like San, uh, South Dakota State, excuse yeah. me, um, your luck can run out in a hurry, especially if you let them get hot. Yeah. I just – I don't think their brand of basketball matches up well as South Dakota State at all either. Um and, and I, I like this Providence team too. We talked about a couple episodes ago. I really like this team and I, and, and I like South Dakota state too. Um, but to see this as a four thirteen, I mean, this feels more like an eight, nine game. 
you know, or I mean, a seven ten maybe, but I mean, to me, these teams are pretty much on par, just two different types of basketball. I think this is going to be another really, really good first round game. Uh, we'll continue moving down the six eleven game. Another one that I kind of had to think about a lot, LSU, Iowa state. I've got the cyclones. Who do you have? I also have the cyclones moving on here. Yeah. And, uh, kind of an interesting, um, interesting game. And, and the six elevens this year really as a whole were interesting. Um, I believe Colorado state is the only non big six school that is in the six eleven game. Uh, cause I mean, you have LSU, Iowa state, uh, Michigan, Colorado state, obviously Texas, Virginia tech, and then Alabama winner of Rutgers, Notre Dame. So all those, you know, power five, big six schools, um, and Colorado state being the only one that's not, I just thought that the six elevens were really hard to pick this year. Um, I've got Iowa State moving on, though, and so do you. Yep. So they'll play the winner of Wisconsin Colgate. And I know you are really high on this Colgate team. They're in the NCAA tournament last year and got some attention. Um, They're kind of getting that same attention again this year. Um, You got Colgate moving on or what? This is another game I've gone back and forth on. Um, Colgate, obviously, uh, phenomenal shooting team, uh, especially from beyond the arc. And they're super experienced, a ton of seniors, and they've won like 20 of their last 21 or 19 of their last 20, something ridiculous like that. And it's always tough to pick against a team like that, especially Wisconsin team who we've seen throw out a couple clunkers. They lost to Nebraska. Uh, I believe they lost to Penn State as well. And it's a tough, tough matchup for me to pick, but I give the edge to Wisconsin. They're playing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I mean, this is even a matchup I could change going into tomorrow. Yeah, um, I think that is the reason I picked Wisconsin. Um, you know, Colgate last year had some hype and, you know, I felt eh about it. Um, this year, I kind of feel the same way. I see it. I see what people see, um, but I don't see them matching up against a team like Wisconsin. I just think Wisconsin's too sound. Um, and I wasn't high on this Wisconsin team. But also the fact that they get to play in freaking Milwaukee. I mean, are you serious? An hour from home? I mean, it's a home game. You're, play, you're literally playing a home game. That, I mean, you think, Colgate's, you think Colgate fans are going to travel? Hopefully we don't have any Colgate fans listening. But you're not going to Milwaukee. I mean, come on. They, you know, that, that stadium is going to be completely red. It's going to be 100% Wisconsin fans. It's going to be a home game for them. I, you know. I see the hype about Colgate. I don't love it. I've got Wisconsin. So we have Iowa State, Wisconsin. I believe both of us there. Yep. Uh, and then the final round of 64 games here, uh, USC Miami in the 710. Uh, another game I've kind of gone back and forth. I don't love either team. I don't find either team really, really, I don't know, real flashy or anything. Um, I've got USC moving on. I think that's strictly based on their, on, on last year, what they did last year. Yeah, I have USC moving on as well, and I think this USC team can make some noise. They went to the Elite Eight last year. Um, they're huge. They've got, I think, a guard at 6'7", um, mm-hmm. obviously Isaiah Mobley at 6'10", 6'11", and then another forward um, who I believe is like 6'9", and that's a tough matchup. Like we said earlier, um, any team that you're facing in college basketball that has a ton of height, that's a poor matchup for almost any team out there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't find either team real, uh, real special, but I've got USC moving on um, pretty much just because of last year, and they've got some experience and some age there. Uh, they play the winner of Auburn, Auburn, Jacksonville State. I've got the Tigers moving on. I have the Tigers moving on as well. Yeah, I mean, Jacksonville State um, got in on a prayer in the Atlantic Sun, um, didn't even win their conference tournament. Uh, Bellarmine played Jacksonville in the conference championship. Bellarmine, obviously, on a five-year um, ban, I guess you want to call it, from moving up from Division Two to Division I. Uh, if Bellarmine won, the rule is the regular season champ goes, that being Jacksonville State. Um, so, I mean, they didn't even win their conference tournament, and they're in. I, I don't love it. Um, and obviously, a 15-2, just nothing special there. So, we'll head into the round of 32. I have Kansas Creighton. You have Kansas San Diego State. Who do you got? This is a game where I really wanted to pick against Kansas. Um We've seen them lose these games before in the NCAA tournament. I just – I couldn't go with it this year. I've got Kansas moving on. Um, Oshai Abaji is a phenomenal, phenomenal player, and I just think they're going to be too strong for San Diego State at the end of the day. Yep, I also have Kansas moving on. Um, I obviously haven't played in Creighton, but I've got Kansas. 
Um, and then in the next round of 32, I was South Dakota State. I believe we both have. Who do you got? I've got Iowa moving on, but this is a matchup that I think could really go either way. Like you said, they might score 300 points combined. Um, I, I was believe hot, both though. teams averaging over 80 points, correct? And they, and as you literally just said, I think these are the two hottest teams in the country as well. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, Iowa obviously just won the Big Ten tournament. I think maybe a little unlucky to get a five seed. Maybe could have moved up to the four line. Um, regardless, they're on a heater right now, and I think they're going to be tough to beat. Yeah, so Iowa, 83.8 points per game. South Dakota State, 86.7. Uh, neither team plays a ton of defense. Um, man, if there's one team I think that can outscore Iowa in this tournament, it's South Dakota State. Um undefeated and undefeated in conference play they've won like 21 straight or something crazy um probably the two hottest teams in the country right now um i've got south dakota state moving on um you know maybe a little bit of nebraska against iowa bias there but um i got the jackrabbits in the in the sweet 16 uh we'll move down to the last two sweet 16 or excuse me last two round of 32 games iowa state wisconsin who do you have i've got an upset here i've got iowa state moving on um, led by Isaiah Brockington. They're a very, very good defensive team. Um, I want to say top 10 in both defensive efficiency and uh, turnover percentage. And I think they're very good at defending three-point ball as well. And like I said, I almost picked Colgate in the last round. I don't like this Wisconsin team. Um, I think they're better than what the record shows, or they're worse, excuse me, than the record shows. And I just don't trust them. Yeah, uh, I'm not real high on this Wisconsin team either. I think they're a good team, um, but they don't seem to be a, 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 sh- a real strong three seed and a three seed that can make a run. Um, with that being said, as I just mentioned, you get to play in Milwaukee and you're playing a home game. I've got Wisconsin beating Iowa State. Iowa State to me, um, you know, I, I see the flashes, but just still, just still a little flat. I don't love that Iowa State team. Um, I've got Wisconsin moving on and they will play the winner of USC Auburn, which we both have. I've got Auburn. I've got USC moving on here. This is probably the craziest part of any of these four brackets that I've got here. Um, I don't love Auburn. Um, Their guards are not particularly good, especially for a team of their caliber. Um, They're led by Walker Kessler and Jabari Smith, but they're going to run into this USC team who, like I said, has a ton of size and if USC can force the ball into Auburn's guards' hands, which in a lot of Auburn's losses, that's been their downfall, I think USC can win this game. I definitely think USC can win this game. I agree. Um, I have Auburn moving on, I think, just pretty much based on sheer talent alone. I just think that the talent um, is better than USC's, uh, but I don't think it's easy by any means. Um, and if USC was to beat them, I would not be surprised. Um, it's going to be another good game. So in the Sweet 16, yeah, one more note I on Auburn real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Um, their five losses have all been at either neutral site or on the road this year. And like you said earlier, I just don't love that in March and combine that with the report guard play. And I think that's a recipe for disaster. I, I see it. I mean, I see it. I've got Auburn moving on, I think just on, on town alone, but I, I, I definitely see it. Um, it's going to be good. So Sweet 16, Kansas, South Dakota State. Uh, I think the Jackrabbits magic ends here. I've got Kansas moving on. Yeah, I've got Kansas over Iowa here. Um, I think a lot of people will pick Kansas to go down in this game, uh, whether they've got South Dakota State or they've got uh, Iowa, just due to history. And K, uh, KU just tends to kind of falter in these moments. But I think this might be the year that Kansas can get to the Final Four. Yeah, I definitely agree. And then they'll play the winner of – I have Wisconsin Auburn. You do not have either team in. I believe you have USC and and who's your other one there? Iowa State. So USC, USC and Iowa State. Who do you have moving on? I've got USC going to the Elite Eight again. Um, I think that's where Iowa State's luck runs out. Um, but I have no idea who's coming out of the bottom half of the Midwest, really. Um, I think it's a crapshoot down there. It's a lot of really tight yeah. teams and a bunch of teams that don't particularly impress me. I totally agree. I think this region is, uh, I think it's good in all the wrong ways because I don't think there's a lot of good teams and because none of them are really good, they're all going to be close. Um, I I've got Auburn and Wisconsin. I have Auburn moving on. I think they've been one of the front runners all year and they've kind of choked it away late, but uh, you know, they're 
probably still a top five team in the country and probably the best two seed. Maybe. I don't know. It's, it, it's tough. Um, I don't love, I don't love them. You know, I just think that they've, they haven't really, they haven't been strong at the right time. Um, they just kind of like faltered into the, into the, into the tournament. Um, but yeah, I've got Kansas Auburn, um, the one of the two, I don't, I don't believe I had the one of the two in any other region. I had to take one. Um, so Kansas Auburn, you've got Kansas USC. Who do you got? I've got Kansas going to the final four. I also have Kansas over Auburn headed into the final four. Um, I think this Kansas team's really good and I don't, I don't love Auburn and, and, and I don't know about USC maybe. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I think Kansas um, can really take over this region. They shoot the ball pretty well when they're hot. And it's really going to be as far as Oshai Obaji, uh wants to take them. Yeah, so you're who, who all do you have in the Final Four? Gonzaga, Kentucky? Arizona and Kansas. Gonzaga, Kentucky, Arizona, and Kansas. So you've got three one seeds in. Yep. I, I have Gonzaga – <laughs> I have Gonzaga, Kentucky, Houston, and Kansas. So a lot of this kind of came down to um, you know, some historical, you know, trends and one or two, one, this is in the final four, one or two one seeds have made the final four 29 out of the 36 times um, that obviously seeding has been around. That's 80 and a half percent that there's been one or two one seeds in the final four. Um, all others combined, it just makes up 19.5. That being no one seeds, three or four. Um, I'm going to take the odds and say one or two. Um, you can't really, can't really go wrong with either one. I believe the average is like one, yeah, 1.64 one one seeds make the final four every year. So just a shade over one and a half one seeds make it. Um, that's kind of why I ended up taking two. Um, and then another stat here that, that I relied on. A two seed has made the final four 30 out of the 36 times. That's 83%. Uh, and my two seed being Kentucky. So I wanted to get a two seed in there. And then, as I mentioned earlier, um, I mean, I'm pulling out all the, you know, just the most random stats in the world here, but a, uh, a seed higher than four has made the final four nine of the last 10 times. Um, mine is Houston there. So I've got a one, I got two one seeds, a two seed, a five seed. Uh, a lot of those just based on, uh, historical trends that we've seen in March Madness before is kind of, kind of what I went on in, in the regional finals on, on who I wanted to take into the final four. Yeah. Um, I don't love Kansas. Um, like I do the other three teams that I have in my final four, but I think that region is just too weak for them to not come out of it. Um, but like I said, I love Arizona. I love Kentucky. I think they're two of the best teams in the entire tournament. Um, and Gonzaga is obviously Gonzaga. I, they're the best team throughout the entire year. Uh, a couple slip up St. Mary's, Alabama. Um, but I think they're just too big and too talented for everybody else in that region. Yeah. And one thing I like about Gonzaga this year, um, that's going to sound weird, but they've lost um, last year being undefeated, just looking at it from, you know, the aspect of their entire season are you going to win every single game no like there's no way it was just it just seemed like too difficult that they were going to win every single game I mean they lost one game and it was the only game that really you know really mattered it was the one game that mattered the most um this year they've lost and and they don't have that pressure anymore um and getting into my championship game I've got Gonzaga Kansas who do you have I've got Gonzaga Arizona in the championship game yeah, so I wanted to get two one seeds in there. Um, back to the back to the numbers. This is how I make my bracket. Um, a one seed has won the national championship twenty, or excuse me, sixty four percent of the time. That is twenty three out of the thirty six years. So all other seeds combined have only won it thirteen times, um, compared to a one seed winning twenty three. So I wanted to get two one seeds in there. Uh, just historically, they win. Obviously, they're the best teams in the tournament. You know, they win, um, they win the most. And who do you have win it at all? You have Gonzaga? I've got Arizona. I don't love it. I've gone back and forth. Um, Arizona, obviously coached by uh, Tommy Lloyd, former Gonzaga assistant. And mm -hmm. I don't love it. I 
I think this is the year that Gonzaga wins it, but I've been telling myself in the buildup since the bracket was released, I'm not picking Gonzaga until they actually win it. It's, I think this is another matchup I'm going to go back and forth on uh, until the bracket locks in the morning. But right now I've got yep. Arizona. Um, I love them. We'll get into some of our favorite teams in the tournament, which we've already talked about a little bit. We can dive a little deeper, but I love Arizona and I've got them winning it all. Yeah. So I, um, I've got Kansas winning it all. And I originally had Gonzaga. I, I honestly think Gonzaga wins it. The reason I picked Kansas, um, when you're talking points and the bracket challenge and trying to finish first in a group, um, because everybody is going to pick Gonzaga. Most people will pick Gonzaga. Uh, if Gonzaga wins, you don't really get any points for that, um, you know, compared to everybody else, if that makes sense. So I'm taking Kansas, um, maybe rolling the dice. If it ends up being Kansas Gonzaga and Kansas wins, I'm going to get those points over everybody else that picked Gonzaga. If I was to pick Gonzaga and Gonzaga wins, like everybody else has, you're not getting any points over them. Um, I kind of want Gonzaga to win. Um, you know, if I've got 62 games, right, then I'm going to want Kansas to win. Um, but honestly, I mean, odds are my bracket, you know, goes up in flames about six games in and I probably want the Zags to win anyways. I, I, I want them to get it done. I said it a couple episodes ago. Um, they deserve a national title. They've been too good for too long. I, I want them to win, but I've got Kansas picked um, just solely for numbers and points and all that. So. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting for sure. I think this is outside of the uh, West. Excuse me. I could figure out what region Gonzaga was in for a second. I think that this is a super interesting tournament. I think you've got a region like the South, which is just loaded. And like we said, in the Midwest, we don't really have a favorite that sticks out to us in a lot of those games. Um, I think it's a super balanced tournament. It's going to be really interesting to watch how it uh, unfolds. I totally agree with that. And I've got one thing on your Arizona pick here. Um, I'm a, I'm a trends guy. That's what I like uh, in the tournament. No top two seed uh, hang on. Let me read this. Sorry. No top two seed. And that is currently ranked inside the AP top 10, but was unranked to start the season has made it to the final four. Arizona qualifies into that. So there's no top two seed one or two that is currently in the top 10 in the AP poll started unranked. The season has made it to the final four that eliminates Arizona. Weird things yeah. like that is what I base my bracket off of. I don't, I don't hate it at all. Um, Arizona obviously was poor last year, replaced their head coach. Uh, but I think they're just a very strong team. I think they're electric. Uh, they're top five in offense on Kim Palm. They're top 20 on defense. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know. We'll see. I it's, mean, they're one seed for a reason. They're good. Yeah, but like I said, that South region is stacked. And, I mean, there's three or four teams, in my opinion, that can come out of that region. And it wouldn't surprise me. All right. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Um, one of those teams who I've got coming out of that region is Houston. I love this Houston team. I mean, when you go look at their metrics and their stats this year, they're, they're at the very top. I mean, when you're, when you're talking like percentages to make final four, um, you know, and, and you see it on those websites that run all that data analytics stuff, they're up there. I mean, and they're a five seed um, you look at stats and, and they're plastered all over, you know, defense and stuff. Um, you know, they, they're a great team. I think they're a phenomenal team. They're number one in the NCAA field goal percentage defense, uh, number 11th in NCAA three point field goal percentage defense. Um, I love this team. There's one thing that scares me and that's going to be free throw shooting. They have, they, they have to make free throws. If you're going to make free throws for, you know, four five, six games, it's gotta be right now. Um, especially in close games. That's the one thing that scares me. And, and hopefully they don't get into a situation where they need them. They've got five combined losses by 23 points this season. And four of those five losses to tournament teams. The one that's not is SMU, who is a bubble team and arguably could have gotten in over a team like Rutgers, Notre Dame, Michigan, these teams that, you know, maybe thought shouldn't have got in. Uh, they, they, they haven't lost any bad teams and they've lost close every single game. Obviously close loss doesn't do you anything in March, but you know, when you're losing close, you're in it and can win. Uh, you know, all it takes is one shot. If you're losing by two points, all you got to do is hit a three and you win the game. You know, it's easier said than done, but they're in these games. And I mean, for them to be a five seed just blows my mind. Um, I love this Houston team. I've obviously got them in the final four. 
um, just kind of based on historical trends and everything, but also based on their team. Um, I love them. I love the Cougars. So I love, I love that Houston team. Yeah. And I've already said it a couple of times, Kentucky and Arizona, two of my favorite teams, in the entire tournament. Um, Arizona, I've obviously touched on their Ken Palm rankings. They're also top 12 mm-hmm. in assist to turnover ratio. And yeah. that can bode really, really well in March, especially when you run into um, teams that are strong defensively, like a team like Houston. Um, but they're also young. And obviously last year, um, they had to fire Sean Miller. NCAA allegations kind of looming over their head yeah. the whole season. Um, they're not experienced in the NCAA tournament. And that's something that always scares me, especially since I have them picked as my national champion. But the other team I like a ton is Kentucky. Uh, they're a top 12 offensive rebounding team uh-huh. um, led by, by Oscar Shibwe, who is one, probably a top five player in the entire tournament. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, Coach Calipari has probably the most talented team in the country. And I think they've got the highest ceiling out of anybody if they get hot. Um, and they've also got five guys averaging double digits in their starting lineup. And anytime you can fill it up like that, it's it can get you a long ways. Yeah, I got them in my final four for a reason. They're they're really, really good. Um, yeah. The, I mean, they can do everything. They can they can rebound, they can score, they can do everything. And I mean the thing about thing about making a bracket and, and valuing how, how you value teams is is what what metrics do you value um, on how you want to base your team? To me, I like experience and age and what you did last year and and, and your ability to control the pressure um, because you've been there. And, you know, that 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 might not be a big deal for some people. Some people might, you know, look at that and be like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, turnovers, they play a good defense. Team like St. Mary's, San Diego State, people love that. Some people think offense will get you there. Purdue, Iowa, South, uh, South Dakota State. Uh, it just depends on how you value it. And, and there's no, you know, we're saying, you know, all oh, this team's good at, you know, doing this and this and this just depends on, on what you value. I mean, there are teams that don't force a lot of turnovers. Um, there are teams that, you know, like to play reckless and, and play quick and, and try and force turnovers, but give up, give up points. I mean, you saw Abilene Christian last year. They, they love to play reckless. They love to get steals. They, they wanted you to, they wanted you to turn the ball over put pressure on you and they beat Texas. Uh, this year, not in the tournament, but they're one of they're one of the smallest teams in the country, and that's just how they play. You know, do you value size? Does that matter? Uh, there's a thousand ways to make the bracket. There's no right or wrong. Um, nobody has ever gotten it all right. Nobody ever will. I kind of stand by that, except for me. Um, this bracket here, obviously, mine's perfect this year. Uh, you guys just don't know it yet, but um, that's just kind of my spiel on on how to make it. There's no right or wrong. There's just a ton. There's a different way to interpret everything, and and. Yeah, yeah. The, and the funny thing about it, the funny thing about it, and in the beginning, you just blindly look at these teams. You know nothing about college basketball, and it's completely random. It doesn't matter. You start doing some research and you kind of pick up trends, and then you kind of get into enough numbers and, and looking at stuff. You can make an argument for any team to win it. So it kind of just go. You kind of just make a full loop of of you know not not it not really mattering to a little bit of stats, and then you kind of pick up on all the stats and every team's games and who beat who and trends and everything, and you just make a full circle. So. That's my spiel. Yeah, absolutely. It's super easy to just run yourself in a circle. And uh, obviously I said, I haven't done a ton of research so far because I was kind of off the grid a little bit, but it's just, you can run yourself in so many different circles in so many different directions. And by the time you're done, you've picked eight different national champions and it can get out of control in a hurry. Yeah. Let me see. I think I, I gotta, I gotta check how many I have this year. How many brackets? Um, Nine. I've got nine this year. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that's I've how I got feel about it right now. I've got um, a main. I got a main one, and then I just kind of base some stuff differently. So, yeah, I've only got three, but I mean, I've just started making them today. Um, I'm sure I'll have a little fun with it later tonight. Yeah, for sure. So, one thing I want to do to wrap up um, is pick some seeds, some lower seeds that we think have a good shot at beating the higher seeds, some upsets. Um, Pick one at every seed uh, who you think might have a shot at, at taking down the higher seed and, uh, you know, being a, um, you know, a bracket buster this year. We'll start with the 16-1. I've only ever seen it one time, UMBC over Virginia. But luckily they, um, uh, you know, they showed us it was possible and, and you know, definitely made the one seeds more nervous um, from there on for or, you know, from there on out uh, moving forward. Who do you got as a 16 that has a shot at beating a one? I would say it's 
Norfolk State over Baylor, if anything. Like I said, Baylor a little shorthanded. And Norfolk State, they shoot the ball really well. They score 75 a game. And um, in their conference tournament final, they made 11 out of 23 from three-point range. And if that happens, Mm -hmm. you just – you never know. That's unpredictable in March. That is definitely one I agree with. Um, But I also think Wright State has a good shot at beating Arizona. Um, I definitely thought, as I said earlier, Bryant was going to beat Wright State. Wright State really kind of put a whooping on him tonight. Uh, Hung 93, I believe. Um, I mean – you're putting up 93 points in March. You, you got a shot against Arizona. Obviously, Arizona is, is going to be way more talented and, and have way more experience, but you never know. Um, you know, if they're able to score 93 points again, I think they got a shot against Arizona. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, super unlikely, but a team like Arizona who last year didn't make the tournament, you yeah. never know how they're going to perform when the lights are on. Yeah, for sure. So moving on to the 15 over the two, I have St. Peter's beating Kentucky. Who do you have? If one's going to happen, I think it's going to be Duke, Cal State, Fullerton. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. Duke's coming in with a ton of pressure. Obviously, Coach K's last tournament. They lost the regular season finale. They lost the ACC tournament finale. Um, Cal State, Fullerton is a team who they shoot the free throw really well but they turned the ball over a ton. I believe they had more turnovers and assists during the regular season um, as a team, but it's also a team who plays really, really slow. And we've seen teams uh, give true, excuse me, Duke trouble who play really slow. I believe Cal State Fullerton is like 290th in the country in possessions per game. And Duke has faced teams like that in Virginia and Wake Forest and Clemson. And all of those teams play Duke close in at least one of their games. So that's where I could see Duke getting into a little bit of trouble. I don't think it's going to happen, though. I definitely agree with that. Um, I've got St. Peter's over Kentucky. St. Peter's plays some of the best defense in the country. Um, I definitely think that it's going to be tough to lock up Kentucky just with their starting five and and how dominant they are um, around the rim. Um, But you never know. I mean, if you come out with a good defensive scheme and you're able to switch it up and switch it up effectively, show some different looks uh, every time down the floor, um, you know, they, they might be able to, they might be able to pull it off. I don't, I don't think so. Um, I definitely don't see an, an oral Roberts in this, in this bracket. Um, you know, oral Roberts, I looked at and said, yeah, this is a dangerous 15 seed. Um, this year I just don't see one. Um, but St. Peter's, I think maybe can, can play defense and, uh, you know, kind of limit Kentucky and, and, and keep it close late and win, but, you know, we'll see. So moving on to the 14-3, we talked about it earlier. I'm sure you probably had the same one. I've got Colgate over Wisconsin. Um, You know, the one thing, as I mentioned earlier, that that I don't love Wisconsin playing pretty much at home. Um, You know, but I I see the hype around Colgate. I mean, a team that can shoot, um, especially Wisconsin, who loves playing slow. um, You never know. Yeah, absolutely. I've got the same thing. Um, Obviously, Wisconsin essentially at home. But... Honestly, any of these three seats could lose. Um, Tech, like I said earlier, could throw out a clunker on any given night offensively. I don't think they'll lose to Montana, Montana State, State, but yeah. you just never know when you, you're you inconsistent like that on offense. In Tennessee, they're hot, but throughout the regular season, offensively, they were also very inconsistent. And mm-hmm. if you come out in the tournament and you shoot like eight for 29 from three, and you, the other teams believe in a little bit as a lower seed that can get out of control in a hurry. Not yeah. necessarily you're going to get blown out, but that belief just grows and grows and grows as the game goes on. And Purdue's a team that struggled down the stretch. I don't think Yale's going to play them particularly close, but they're not super good defensively. So that could be an upset. Um, absolutely be an upset. Yeah. Um... I, I, it's, it's a matchup that you just kind of, um, you just kind of pick the higher seed and move on. Um, but one, one set of, of matchups I'm really excited about this year is the 13 and the four seeds. Um, I have it on here. I don't love the five twelves this year. Um, none of them just seem intriguing to me. That's the upset that everybody, everybody picks every year. It, it's usually what ruins, um, brackets this year. I think the four thirteen is going to be is going to be the five twelve. I think the four thirteen are what people need to watch. Um, I obviously have South Dakota State over Providence, uh, but that is not the only one I would pick. 
I definitely could see probably all the 13s beating the fours this year. Um, maybe outside of Akron beating UCLA, but um, you know, I mean, you got Chattanooga over Illinois that I think could happen. Um, obviously SDSU over, over Providence. Um, and then, you know, you got Vermont, Arkansas. I mean, those are all, you know, really tough, close games. Um, who, who do you have there? Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I've got South Dakota state. Um, I've also got Vermont winning. I'm more confident South Dakota State winning over Providence. Like we talked about, their luck, number one in the entire country in Ken Palm and luck. I don't love that matchup for Providence. But like you said, I think any of these games are winnable for the 13 seats outside of Akron, really. I think US, uh, US, USCLA, excuse me, uh, coming off final four run, I think is too experienced uh, to get upset in the first round. Yeah, I definitely agree. And uh, we'll talk about those 512s that, that neither of us really love. Um, I believe we both picked them. We got Indiana over St. Mary's. Yep. Um, that's yeah. really the only I one I see. Yeah. I don't love the UAB pick over Houston. Um, like I said, I've gone back and forth on that and I ended up going with Houston. Yeah. I just don't love any of these 12 seeds, but I mean, it's March and I'm sure we'll see one or two pick up a win. Yeah, for sure. I've got one, I've got one 12 seed over five, that being Indiana over St. Mary's. And of course that won't be the one that happens. It's going to be, it's probably going to be like New Mexico state over Yukon um, just because none of us picked it. And I didn't put enough time into, into that game. Um, but I don't love them. I don't know, but it's March. You never know. It's the five twelve. It's kind of supposed to be that way. Moving on to the 11, six, I have Virginia tech over Texas. Yeah, I have the same as well. Um, I've got Virginia Tech into the Sweet 16, and I've also got Iowa State, who's uh, 11 over the six seed LSU. I've also got mm -hmm. them in the Sweet 16. I think the 6 11 matchups are super intriguing this year. Obviously, Michigan. Yeah. Um, I've also got them over Colorado State, and I think you do as well. Yeah. It's just, it's super tough to call this year. Um, obviously, you get a team like Michigan as an 11 seed, and that's a talented team. They started the country ranked top five in the country or started the season, excuse me, ranked top five in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's a dangerous matchup for any team in the tournament, even though they haven't played particularly well all season. Yeah, for sure. 11-6 uh, and, and I think 13-4 are a lot better than 12-5 this year. Um, so moving on to the 10-7, I've got Davidson over Michigan State as mine. I have the same. Um, I'd also go with Loyola over Ohio State, although I think that's yeah. probably going to be a bit of a closer game. Um, I'm much more comfortable with David Center for Michigan State. And then the 8-9, pretty much toss-up every year, um, but I've got Memphis over Boise. Yeah, I have the same pick as well. And then I would also go TCU Seton Hall um, just to change it up a little bit from you. But I think yeah. all those games are going to be pretty close. Either team could come out of any of those matchups. Yeah, for sure. Um I mean, it, it always gets tough to just pick one upset, uh, especially at every seed, uh, you know, like the five twelves. I'd, I'd, I'd rather take two, two, uh, 13 over fours than, than 12 over fives, but, um, it's March. I mean, it's here. Finally. Um, I get super invested into it every year and, um, it's finally here. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts from you? I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I didn't love the bracket when it first came out. I didn't love it. Um, I texted you when it was released. Um, and I said, I just don't like it as much as last year's. I loved last year's bracket. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, and a lot of lower seeds that were really good. And then this year came out and I was kind of, eh. but I think once I got into it, did my research looked, um, I, I like it a lot. And I mean, I've spent hours and hours and hours. I mean, I wake up at, you know, 8am every morning. I, I, grab my phone, do the whirl, and then check my bracket. And, um, I mean, my, my girlfriend said to me multiple times, I, I thought you've already done that. I thought you already done that. I'm like, well, you know, it, it's a process. It's not, it's not, I just pick one and then I move on. You know, it's a process. I do a ton of research. Um, I mean, I've got, you know, I've got notes and notes and notes and notes of, you know, of, of teams. And I mean, last year I had an Excel spreadsheet. Um, this year, unfortunately, I, I didn't have it, but I, you know, found the website that the data came from and I'm, you know, scrolling through the, Throwing through the data, you know, this, 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 you know, how does, how does win percentage correlate with, with experience? How does age, what about height, you know? And I just look at everything. And, and as I mentioned earlier, I just make this circle. It just comes back to uh, who do I want to win? You know, who do I think is going to win? Um, but that's just kind of my final thoughts. I, it Right now, before the game start, it seems like, okay, you know, there's not a lot of good 512s. 
uh, we could come back next week and all 12s could have won. And we're like, what the heck? Um, you know, one thing that does suck about it, half the tournament happens on Thursday and Friday, right? There's 63 games. There's 32 Thursday and Friday. So, you know, that's one thing that sucks. Obviously the first, first and second round are the most exciting always. Um, but you know, you can't change that. So. Yeah. Um, I completely agree. It's going to need like four or five TVs out in the living room tomorrow uh, when things <laughs> yeah. get going for sure. Yeah. Um, but just, I think a few final thoughts from me here, the South region I talked about a little bit is loaded. Um, Arizona, Houston, Tennessee, Villanova, yeah. um, even Michigan is an 11 seed four or five of those teams coming out, like any of those mm-hmm. four or five coming out would not shock mm-hmm. me at all. Um, and I also think this year's bracket has potential for some top seeds to go out early. Yeah. I, you know, I picked Auburn to lose in the second round. I picked Baylor to lose in the second round, Kansas. I debated, we both have them in the final four, but they could lose San Diego State or Iowa. Yeah. I, they could lose either of those games if they have an off night. I, it's I've got just, him playing South Dakota State, and I mean South Dakota State could outshoot him. So yeah, absolutely. Either Iowa or uh, South Dakota State, and it's just I think we're in for a good tournament. We'll see. We've obviously got a few higher seeds like Virginia Tech going a long ways. Um, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean it. It it's always fun this this time of the year. Um, and I believe one more closing thought, another another stat that that I based off of that I forgot to mention. Um, I want to say every every year for the past like 12, 15 years or something like that, I, I, I could be wrong. There's been a double digit seed um, make the Sweet 16. Uh, it obviously gets pretty tough to, um, you know, to, to go against the higher seeds and not put the best four teams in the country in your final four. Um, you know, my final four, I've got Gonzaga, Kentucky, Houston and Kansas. Do I think those are my the best four teams in the country? No, I, I don't. And, and it's not going to be the best four, uh, the best eight, the best 16. That's not how it works. Um, you know, you kind of got to get lucky and, and look at matchups and stuff. Um, but, you know, it's always fun. I, I mean, I could, I could talk about this for, for 12 hours. So yeah, finally, absolutely. Go ahead. You got more to say or no? I was just going to say, I mean, it's by no means is it the best way to determine a national champion. Um, but it's sure is a hell of a lot of fun and anything pretty damn fun. (laughs) Yep. Yep. I agree. Um, we get it off tomorrow, uh, 11, 15, 15. I believe Michigan and Colorado state, I know is the first game that's central time. Um, right now we have the last play in game Rutgers, Notre Dame just went to halftime. Uh, 39, 34 is last I saw. Is that, I believe it ended 41, 34, if I'm not mistaken. 41, 34. No, no, um, who? Yeah. Rutgers. Yes. Rutgers. Yeah. Um, another good play in game there. And, and they've got, they've got Alabama, the winner of of the play in game there. So, um, yeah, I have an exciting couple of days uh, coming in and, and hopefully one of us has got uh, all 63 right. And, you know, when we check back next week, we got a pretty exciting podcast and a lot of people listening because they know we've got the last one left. Um, but, you know, we'll uh, we'll be active on Twitter and Instagram covering it all at Fight Song Sports, Twitter and Instagram. Check us out there. Uh, obviously, you can watch both podcasts on YouTube and SoundCloud. Um Man, exciting time, and and I'm ready to get it started tomorrow. So I appreciate it. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, We will be back at you again next week. Um, We appreciate you guys. Thank you.